He'll try to get some in one swart, but most time he's just baiting you, just enticing you, just luring you on a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and it gets worse and worse and worse. And you say, I'm going to get free. And then you can't get free. Then there's chains on you that the strong man has bound you. And rehabilitation can't break those chains. Religion can't break those chains. Mama's money can't break those chains. There's people daily break in steal from their own mama. And she's on a fixed income. But blessed little mama's prayers sometimes. Brother, her money might not can help you. But if you got a praying mama, she's still loving you. And she's still praying for you. That the better of all, the superior of all, the strongest of all, the Lord God. I'm telling you this morning, he can come to where you are. Into the darkness, he'll bring light. Into the hate, he'll bring love. Into the bondage, he'll bring liberty. And he'll snap those chains. Throw you up over his shoulder as his little wounded lamb. And carry you back to where he intends for you to be make up your mind this morning that you're going to let God draw you and God pull you there's those Greek words there for you you either got the wilderness of death or you've got the word of life let's go quickly to John 6 68 that's where Jesus had been talking about the bread of life and then he told him the hard thing he wasn't talking about cannibalism he said, you got to come out of that religion and accept me. And then everybody was leaving him. Everybody was walking away from him. And he asked the disciples, are you all going to leave too? And Peter said in the 68th verse of the 6th chapter of John, where are we going to go? Lord, we ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> Some people think, well, that's Peter insulting the Lord. I don't believe, I don't interpret it that way. Oh, Peter said, there ain't nowhere else. There is nobody else. I've been here, been there, been over here, been over here, and there ain't nothing. You've got the words of life. And I'm telling you, you don't have to wander around in the wilderness of death, but you can live by the word of life. There's the draw. Either the better, the better covenant and the better way and the, and the better sacrifice and the better priest and the better hope and the better promise and the better country or perdition that where the old devil wants to take your well-being. They got to Kadesh Barnea and what happened? God said, Moses, get me one representative of every tribe so I want you to send 12 men up into the land of Canaan, land of promise, spy it out, come back and let, in 40 days and let me hear what they have to say. Kadesh Barnea, 10 of those people out of 12 were just full of can'ts. We can't, we can't, we cannot. Doubt, doubt, doubt. And it was all coming from that draw of this old wilderness and world out here. And that force that they allowed to be coming up out of their own mind and out of their own life. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb, Caleb had another spirit, said, let's go up at once and take the land. When they went up into that land, Caleb recognized and realized he didn't have to, have to fight for it, he had to have faith for it. Amen. That his God was bigger than any Anakim up there. The other 10 said, there's giants up there, we cannot go. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? And that Egyptian or worldly power kept pulling on them. And they gave themselves to that. But Romans chapter, uh, uh, see, Rome, let's see, what was we reading over there in, in uh, Romans chapter 8, down about verse 11? That the resurrection power dwells within you. Hallelujah. But still that old force of Adam is within you. So which way am I going to go? That's the decision that I've got to make. Caleb knew that there was another power within him. That's why God said, my servant Caleb's got another spirit. He doesn't have the spirit that the other ten has. He's got a better spirit. My spirit. Not because Caleb was wiser or smarter, but because Caleb had heard the word of life. Adam lived to almost the flood. Do you know that? Adam lived to Lamech. It was a translation of the words of history that went down into those families. Abraham knew that Adam was the wisest man to ever walked the planet because he fellowshiped with God. 
He told Seth. Seth told Enos. It came on down the line even beyond Noah and the boys. It came to Abraham. It came down to Jacob. It came down to Joseph. And if you'll read the New Testament in Matthew chapter 1, you'll find the second verse talks about Judah. Did you know that's the family of Caleb? Caleb was of the tribe of Judah. He knew what God Almighty had said to Abraham. Abraham said on this hill Moriah, I will provide myself a lamb for a burnt offering. And I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, before we leave this morning, here's the simple truth. It is all still on the top of the hill. That's where it's at. That's where your victory is. That's where your promise is. That's the blood of the new covenant. That's everything. Don't tell me about all this other stuff. Caleb said on Moriah in Canaan is where the lawgiver will be the living redeemer and he'll be my my sacrifice. I've got the land. He promised me the land. His promises are true. I don't have to fight Anakim off of my mountain. My God will get him off of my mountain. He's the owner. I'm the inhabitant. And they're the squatters. They're the trespassers. I ain't a grace hopper. I'm a giant killer. <laughs> now let's get drawn up in that land. Take that hill. Take that land. Years later, 45 years later. Now listen. Listen to me. People will mess you up. People will ruin you. Amen. People will frustrate you. Caleb and Joshua all excited like little boys. Pockets full of pomegranates, mangoes, nanners a yard long, <laughs> grapes like basketballs. Went down there and told Moses they got to dumping out their pockets and throwed that staff in there that that one big cluster of grape was on. Says, go up right now and take the land. We're well able. Some old dude stood over and said, nope, I don't think so. <laughs> How many of you have been excited to death about some project, something God wants you to do, and then some old long tongue that ain't never been successful in nothing but think they're successful in everything and especially counsel and wise instruction tell you you can't? How many of you have been told you cannot do that? You can't do that. You can't join that visitation team. Deacons next Sunday, the visitation team. Moist. I'm going to do it publicly now, girls. I told the visitation squad up there, I was going to tell you deacons, you need to come up there. They're doing the work of deacons. We need some deaconesses around here. We need some Phoebes. We need somebody in the highways and hedges that'll know your giftings of God and get busy for God and get excited about God. People say, you can't. You watch me then. Old Caleb said, don't tell me we can't. We're just grace hoppers. And there was the draw on those ten. They died in a matter of days. And here's the deal. God, I've wondered many times why you let a few mess it up for the others. It's important what we all do. Even when they got into Canaan, they lost the battle at Ai. Why? Because one man Achan had a Babylonian garment buried in his tent floor. And God said, Israel hath partaken of the accursed thing. I don't care how good I am, how strong I am, or how brilliant I think I am, I had better keep the glory going to God. And I can't get too cocky in myself, I'll fall. Because pride goeth before a fall. But I sure don't want to be guilty this morning or letting some old grumbler or critic keep me from doing what God Almighty wants me to do. Your hope's not in a popular preacher, whether it be C.T. Townsend, whether it be Mike Sage, whether it be Billy Graham or Mordecai Ham back through time. Your hope is in God. But it bugs me sometimes when you see preachers they'll, or people, they'll excuse certain ones and they won't excuse others. Because that draws got them into their self. And their self is being drawn by the society of this old world and the sin that's propagated by Satan. But there's some, though, who knows there's another direction. Caleb finally, after all those years, Joshua said, what do you want? And he said, I want my mountain. 
Joshua was kind of jokingly said, Randy said, well, old man, there's giants up there. I'd rather have a good attitude, hadn't you? He didn't start a big, long discourse how those 10 people ruined him back yonder 45 years ago. He never said, well, I'd been here a long time ago. Hadn't been them long-tongued doubters. Get over it and get on with it. Kill the team, burn the plow, and get going in the right direction. That's what God's saying this morning. Caleb didn't have bad stuff to say about all those folks that did really ruin him. But he said to Joshua, I want my mountain. And he went to Hebron. And then the inheritance of his daughter. I don't know what happened to Anakim, but he ain't mentioned. (laughs) When ten say you can't, as long as the one says you can, mark her down to the bottom of your gut. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And if I got to wait a little bit, God will help me while I'm waiting. I'm the world's worst. I got an ADHD so bad, my wife will tell you, I can't put my attention on one thing longer than five seconds. I am pretty bad at that. And I despise to wait. I don't like to wait, my goodness. But there's been a few times in my life that people were smart enough in waiting rooms, they must have knew who I was because they had all kinds of decent books and Tell, and of course, or you can take your books, you can take your Bible. If nothing else, just get a Gideon Bible, man, and start reading Proverbs. Do something. Don't sit there and fume and fuss. Just sit there and let God increase your faith one way or another. You can pass the time pretty good. You don't have to be bored. See, that old attraction again, that's the direction. Get bored and more bored you get, the more aggravated you get, the more frustrated you get. You don't have to be frustrated. You just stay faithful. Are you hearing me this morning? Kill the team, burn the plow, get over it, get on with it, and get going in the right direction. Follow the right draw. Where's your heart? Headed out there toward Canaan land. And let's take off and get it. Because they got through there through the resurrection power. And then there was conflicts. And there were challenges. And the most spiritual person among us this morning, you're not immune from getting your feelings hurt. You're not immune from getting aggravated. Somebody may come up to you and say something they shouldn't say. I can't help that. You can't either. The Bible says each seeks their own. We're living in a weird world today. I know that. This Antifa or Antifa, they call them, causing all kind of violence and news media not even looking at them, not even paying them no mind. But the American people are not stupid. And I don't believe God's people stupid. And the directions of the draw, whatever you let rule you, Romans 8 talks about that in Romans 6 especially. What you serve, who you serve, that's your master. Amen. Christ took your sin and all your inabilities right down to the bosom of hell. And he ascended to the heights of heaven to give you his abilities. Follow him, trust him.